Welcome to all of you, now that we have reached the centenary of the famous Clanfein ambush. In 1921, during the Irish War of Independence, there was an active unit of volunteers here in the Midlands of Ireland, and it was called the North Longford Flying Column. Fifty years later, Father Gilfillan, the parish priest in Granard, suggested that the ambush at Clonfin should be commemorated. A committee was formed, which has since been in existence, loyal and active, arranging an annual commemoration and the erection of a monument at Clonfin. We have now reached the centenary, a time to celebrate. Because of the present prevailing COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot have a public commemoration. I can only greet you who are listening and ask you to join with me and the committee in remembering the brave Irish men of the North Longford Flying Column who risked their lives here for their country a hundred years ago and helped win the freedom of our country. I welcome in particular the families of the Flying Column and their neighbours, friends and supporters including friends who may be overseas. On behalf of the committee, I say Cade Mila Falcha to you. I also say may God have mercy on the men on both sides of the conflict who have long ago departed from this life. May they rest in peace. The ambush at Clonfin on the 2nd of February 1921 was one of the most important actions taken by the IRA in Longford during the War of Independence. 21 members of the North Longford Flying Column, led by Sean McKeown, attacked and defeated a party of auxiliaries on the road from Ballinalee to Granard. The ambush took place during the most violent phase of the conflict in the county. Since Halloween of the previous year, Four members of the Crown forces had been killed in North Longford, and much of both Granard and Ballinalee had been burned in reprisals. There was a heavy presence of Crown forces in the area in early 1921, with frequent patrols and searches being carried out. To take the fight to the enemy, the IRA decided to mount an ambush. Mick Mulligan, the member of the Flying Column, proposed Clonfin as the best location. The site is ideal for a few reasons. The road is level. It turns gradually to the right on the approach from Granard to Clonfin Bridge and there is gently rising ground on both sides, affording the IRA good vantage points. Under cover of darkness on the morning of Wednesday the 2nd of February, a mine was transported to the site and buried in the road on the granard side of Clonfin Bridge. The men of the column took up five positions along the road, mostly on the southern side. Paddy Callaghan had the job of detonating the mine from a position about 40 yards north of where it lay. The command post was in a fort on the southern side, and assuming that the enemy came from Granard, they would pass the fort before reaching the mine. There were two outposts further away on the Granard side and they would engage any reinforcements that might come from that direction and also cover the command post and prevent it from being outflanked. In planning the ambush, the flying column assumed that its target would be a party of police and black and tans. The fact that it was auxiliaries came as a surprise. The auxiliaries were formidable adversaries, being former officers in the British forces during the Great War. M Company had recently arrived in Longford and was based in the county infirmary on Battery Road in Longford Town. The auxies, as they were called, were known for their ruthlessness and were feared. On the 2nd of February, 19 auxiliaries travelled in two crossly tenders on a patrol that took them to Granard, Mullinyokta and Dring. They were on the return journey when they were ambushed. The column members were in their positions for several hours from early morning. 
At about 2.30 in the afternoon, two fowl merchants from Granard passed by. They noticed that the road had been disturbed and stopped, but soon they moved on again. Then, at about three o'clock, the tenders could be heard approaching from Granard. Paddy Callaghan detonated the mine, destroying the first vehicle. The second one pulled up behind it and the men scrambled for cover. The first tender had a Lewis machine gun, which was thrown clear along with its operator, who managed to compose himself and fire at the command post. Jim Sheeran, a veteran of the Great War, who was in the same place as Callaghan, knocked out the gunner. As the fighting went on, Sean Duffy, Mick Dormley and Tom Brady moved from the fort to a new position on the roadside so as to concentrate their fire more accurately. After Francis Worthington Craven, their officer in command, was severely wounded in the neck, the auxiliaries called for a ceasefire. The battle had raged for about half an hour. Craven agreed that his men would surrender all weapons. For his part, McCone promised that the wounded men would be cared for and that the party would be allowed to return to Longford in the second tender. Craven wished McCone luck and he died almost immediately afterwards. John Houghton also died at the scene and two other auxiliaries, George Bush and Harold Clayton, were mortally wounded. Eight more had injuries that were non-fatal. The ceasefire was jeopardised when it was discovered that one auxiliary had held on to his revolver, which was a breach of the terms agreed to by the two commanders. The flying column decided to overlook the man's action. Another auxiliary had escaped from the scene and presumably it was he who summoned reinforcements. They arrived from Ballinalee at about four o'clock, by which time most of the column had left the scene going in a northerly direction towards Clonfin House. However, McCone, Tom Brady and Seamus Conway were still on the road. They departed quickly and were pursued. The trio were almost cut off from their comrades and came under heavy fire as they crossed an area of bog. They and other members of the column opened fire and a gun battle ensued, during which Tom Brady was slightly wounded. By then, IRA reinforcements were also coming to Clonfin. Soon, the Crown forces withdrew as darkness was falling. The ambush was very successful from a tactical perspective and would be held up as a model for how such an operation should be executed. Of course, it was also important because of the humanity and decency with which McCone and his men treated the auxiliaries. This sets Clonfin apart from many other actions in Ireland during that period. Greta Devaney lays a wreath beside the memorial. And now, a minute's silence to remember the men who lost their lives on that day and during the War of Independence on both sides.
And now the Longford Pipe Band leader, Benny McGuinness, plays the Lone Piper's Lament, accompanied by fellow band member Christy Devlin. And now, Hian of Farrell plays the Valley. Tricolour is now being raised by Captain Robert Packenham from the 6th Infantry Battalion of the Reserve Defence Force. And now the Roll of Honour will be read by Donald Mockenvaha and Jerry Shocknessy. Sean McKeown, Kilshruli, Gunyena Dia Trokra Air. JJ Brady, Gaig, Gunyena Dia Trokra Air. Tom Brady, Catherine Markey, Gunyena Dia Trokra Air. 
Paddy Callahan, Old Clonbrony, Gunyena Diatrocrer. Seamus Conway, Disamin, Gunyena Diatrocrer. Pat Cook, Tubber, Gunyena Diatrocrer. Sean Duffy, Cabin, Gunyena Diatrocrer. Seamus Farrelly, Pert, Gunyena Diatrocrer. Paddy Finnegan Molly, Gunyena Dia Trocre Air. Larry Geraghty, Ballymore, Gunyena Dia Trocre Air. Mick Gormley, Esker, Gunyena Dia Trocre Air. Hugh Hurricane, Kilty Clap, Gunyena Dia Trocre Air. Jack Hughes, Scrabby, Gunyena Dia Trocre Air. Mick Kenny, Dermil, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Paddy Lynch, Pulladui, Gunia Gia Troca Air, John McDowell, Lister He, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Jack Moore, Street, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Mick Mulligan, Willsbrook, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Michael F. Reynolds, Carle, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Sean Sexton, Kilty Clop, Gunia Gia Troca Air, Jim Sheeran, Creve, Gunia Gia Troca Air. A green Ushle is Koshwar Ahashugus Road Domsa, where Heinz live. Er an ochaid starre will show, a kamora kid vlian teresh liachan plun fion. Today we commemorate one of the most momentous events that ever happened in the county Longford, the Clun Finn ambush. Now, in the whole history of the Anglo Irish conflict, or whatever you want to call it, or centuries of British occupation of Ireland, two major events happened on Longford soil. The first was the, the Battle of Al Namuk on the 9th of September in 1798. And the second one, the, the one we're commemorating today, the Clonfin ambush, happened on the 2nd of February 1921. Now, the first of those, the Battle of Al Namuk, was, of course, a devastating failure. Uh, something like 500 Irish were slaughtered in a field at Shanmull at Al Namuk. So, in terms of that whole period of conflict between Irish and British forces of occupation, the Clunfin ambush really was the one occasion when a significant defeat was inflicted by Longford men on British forces. Now, the War of Independence as a whole, taking it as a whole, Longford played a particularly significant part in that. And when you consider that Longford had the second smallest population of the 32 counties, only Carlow had a smaller population. So, for Longford to play such an important part and to be spoken of in the same terms as Tipperary and Cork and Limerick was an incredible achievement. The historian, the acclaimed historian Marie Coleman, who has written a book on the history of the War of Independence in Longford, she said, Longford was one of the most important theatres of the Irish Revolution during the War of Independence. It was the only significant area of IRA activity outside of Munster. Now, in the previous year, in 1920, uh, the Longford, the IRA and Longford built, built up that reputation. They had attacked barracks and they'd carried out various engagements. And their two most successful operations were in Valley Mahan and Arve in County Cavan. And in both of those uh, places, uh, the garrisons of RIC and TAN surrendered uh, to, the, to the IRA and handed over their arms and equipment. But towards the latter end of 1920, uh, the revenge tactics of the TANs and auxiliaries, they were having a serious impact, but not just on the IRA, but on the people of North Longford, because the burning of Granard, the burning of Ballinalee, uh, this, all markets, fairs, everything was stopped, not just in those towns and villages, but in every town and village in Longford. So it was having a serious impact, really, on life in Longford. So why was Clunfin so significant? Can Tawak the one let Clunfin? Where would it be placed, say, in, in, in national terms? Where would it be rated? Well, first of all, in Yedulshi is the local significance of Clunfin. 
Two weeks earlier, uh, the North Longford Flying Column went to Ballymahan to carry out an ambush there. Partly uh, to get away from, there was a lot of pressure on them in North Longford, and to set up an ambush, there was a convoy of British troops going to come from Longford to Ballymahan. And a Terlican that set up this ambush would help from uh, the people in South Longford, but they brought a lot of their men from North Longford to it. They set two mines in the road at Terlican, and the, the British came all right, but the, the detonators didn't explode, and the whole thing had, be, had to be abandoned. As we say around here, the IRA had to cut their stick fairly quickly, and the ambush was abandoned. So Clunfin, coming a couple of weeks after that, it was a timely and significant strike that was really a major boost to the IRA and to the North Longford Flying Column. And also to their great relief in Clunfin, uh, the detonator uh, and the mine did explode, there just one mine in Clunfin, and it exploded as, as intended. Now, the fact that the British who were in Clonfin were auxiliaries rather than black and tans was also a very significant thing, and especially that they, more elite troops, would surrender and hand over their arms. Uh, that was particularly significant. And it's also worth remembering that it was six months before any version of British troops, RIC, tans, or regular British forces, had surrendered to the IRA in Longford. In fact, Ballymahan Barracks in the August of 1920 was the last time previous when that had happened. Well, at national level, a level na shunte, kien tawuf the wan lishan liyachan shaw. Well, in national terms, to Michael Collins and the IRA, this was also a welcome success because uh, nothing had happened, or not much had happened in Longford for quite a few months. But the use of the landmine was the thing that uh, Collins was particularly interested in. Uh, this was locally engineered, and Collins was anxious to see, could he pass this information on uh, to other active service units around the country? So a month later, he invited Sean McKeown up to Dublin uh, to demonstrate the, how it was made and the use of it. But unfortunately for Sean McKeown, he was shot and arrested at Mullingar on the way home, and of course, uh, some time later, was tried and sentenced to death. So that unfortunately ended up not so well. But um, the encounter really was a great uh, 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 assurance to the GHQ in Dublin that all was well with the IRA in Longford after the lull and the burden of Banlalee and, and, and Granard. And it meant really to Collins that this stronghold in the Midland, Midlands was working again. Because it wasn't just the Midlands. Longford really was in the upper half of the country. If you drew a line from Dublin down to Limerick, Longford was the major stronghold of the IRA, right up, if you took Connacht, Ulster, and North Leinster. North Longford was the pivotal place there. It was taking the lead uh, right throughout 1920 and 1921. So, on Ted Castella, from a British perspective, where was Clonfin significant or was it significant? Now, four auxiliaries were killed at, at uh, Clonfin, and according to research done by Mary Coleman, Seven others never uh, took part in any engagements again with the British Army. Um, so, but on the other hand, that wasn't particularly significant to them because there were other ambushes around the same time. On the 20th of uh, January, down in County Clare, a place called Glenwood, there was an ambush where six RIC, or TANs, uh, were killed. And on the very day after Clunfin, there was a, a a very devastating ambush at Drumkeen in County Limerick, where 11 RIC, TANs, they were all the same really, RIC or TANs, 11 uh, were killed. But to the British, I suppose, 4, 6, 8, 10, it wouldn't be particularly significant. They had come out of a, a major war where they were often losing hundreds in, the sing in a single day. But what really hurt the British was surrender. And to the British, for an elite force really of battle-hardened, auxiliaries to lay down their arms on the road between Ballinalee and Granard to what the British would see as a group of amateur fighters, really. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was a blow to their pride. And it wasn't just Clunfin on its own, but other ambushes, as I mentioned, in Limerick and Clare and elsewhere. Uh, th it was beginning to get through to the British administration in London that the revenge tactics of the Black and Tans weren't working. And we must remember, too, that at Clunfin, uh, Sean McKeown had seen to the injuries. The, 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 when the surrender, that was it. 
In other places, the IRA weren't really as lenient. And indeed, the British in other places weren't as lenient. If you took Selton Hill a month later down in County Leitrim, Sean Connolly, great friend and comrade of Sean McKeown, was killed in the Selton Hill ambush. Six of them, uh, there was no surrender taken, and uh, one man, uh, only one of those who was captured escaped alive. So, overall, the overall management of the operation of the Clunfin ambush, the strategic planning and the positioning of men, the retreat options, all of these were well considered. And also the fact that it said that I think only one of the 19 uh, auxiliaries who were there escaped without some injury. On the other hand, the 21 IRA men who took part there, none of them received any injury in the actual uh, battle, in the actual ambush itself. Rudwan Ella, uh, remember that at this stage, the conflict was over a year in progress say, in County Longford. And the whole Longford Brigade, not a single casualty. They hadn't suffered a single casualty. And I must say that in the whole course of the War of Independence in County Longford, only one IRA man died in active service. And that was uh, Tom Cahill in Drumlish in June of 1921. So yes, Clonfin was a significant event in the War of Independence. And it certainly didn't go unnoticed uh, in Dublin or in London. And it was undoubtedly the North Longford Flying Column. It was their greatest hour. So, from the end of the year, the year 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 Today we gather in prayer in this sacred place. We begin by praying to the Father in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Lord God, whose days are without end, keep us mindful that life is short <coughs> and the hour of our death unknown. Have mercy on the members of the North Longford Flying Column, whom we cherished and named in the royal honour of today. Have mercy also on the deceased members of the Crown Forces who died, Francis Worthington Craven, John Aldrich Houghton, George Bush and Harold Clayton. Now that the old order has passed away, welcome each of them into the paradise where there will be no more sorrow, division or pain. Grant to each one eternal peace and joy. Amen. Let there be peace in our own times. Give us a true desire to work in harmony with all races, creeds and nations to help build your kingdom of peace, of justice and mercy. Inspire our leaders, secular and religious, to guide us with gentle and sure wisdom so that all of us may spend our days in love, security, respect and tolerance. May the Lord bless us, bless us our, our country, country and, and our, our families. families. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty, Almighty God bless, bless us, us, the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen.